Testing, one, two, three. Sorry guys, we're just uh, giving it a bit of a sound check, so I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Just wondering whether you guys can uh, see my screen at all. I'm just giving it a, a bit of a sound check as well as uh, looking at whether you guys can see my screen clearly. Okay, guys, I want to welcome you guys now. Thank you very much. Uh, most appreciated uh, your time uh, today uh, to, to my webinar, to this webinar that is um, uh, hosted by Tickmill. And uh, I'm actually with my screen on, on Tickmill um, trading account as well. Uh, so uh, this is the geometric analysis webinar uh, that would be happening every Tuesday. The live geometric uh, webinar does actually include trade ideas that I would be using a uh, geometric trading method, uh, mainly drawing the patterns uh, right in front of you guys on the live market. So it'll be a very interesting webinar for you. And uh, you'll be um, given trade ideas based on the geometric patterns. And because it's a live market, you will be able to see it for yourself the effectiveness of the uh, trading strategies, of the strategies, uh, trading strategies, and also ask me, um, you know, questions. Now, uh, before that, just a little uh, disclaimer that you guys know that it is by all means um, not uh, an exact, not exactly a uh, trade entry uh, type webinar. It is more educational for educational purposes for you to actually apply these techniques and to actually improve your current uh, knowledge and skills that you already have to apply that into a uh, trading plan. And with that, uh, you know, I'll be your mentor uh, through Tickmill as well to guide you through your trading venture and exploration. Okay, so that's basically it, and uh, we shall then begin. So uh, what we do usually in this trade idea type webinar on a uh, live geometric analysis is to go over a couple of um, a couple of pairs that the traders or big boys are actually focusing on. So um, I've got my uh, sort of resources as well through bank reports and a couple of other uh, areas that I uh, would look into where the traders are focusing on. I mean, most investors, traders, what are the pairs that they are actually focusing for the day? So we want to look into uh, short term, medium term, as well as long term type trade plan. Uh, or instruments. Now, here basically, we're looking into a um, uh, couple of resources and found out as of today when market, you guys probably already know, yesterday was a public holiday, President's Day in the US. So the um, US market has just actually, um, you know, came into the picture on the uh, today when market opened. So we did actually see an appreciative move of the US dollar. Now, with that, um, through looking at uh, various sources as well, I find that uh, you've got loads of appreciation of price of the USD, of the US dollar. But there's there's also 
um, there seem to be a lot of uh, focus on the CHF. CHF stands for your um, for your Swiss franc, and uh, that is mostly on a sell. Most investors, traders are looking into selling the CHF. There may be reasons for that, but uh, timing is of essence, whether they are selling it for now, waiting until more uh, falling pressures, uh, and why are they buying US dollars now, and are they actually looking into holding it much more? So what we would like to do is look into fundamental aspects and combine that with the geometric pattern. So uh, before before going further, I would like to cover one very, very important step to market analysis is identifying the trend. Now, as you can see on my screen, uh, let me just make sure that you're looking at my screen at the moment. Okay, so you've got my screen on at Stick Mills um, trading account right here. And as you can see, um, I have plotted three lines on my screen. Now, that's your candlestick chart, okay, for those of you guys who are new. I've got my candlestick chart right here, and what I usually do as my very first step when I identify trend is I make sure that I apply three moving averages on there. And these moving averages are called the exponential moving average. And the exponential moving average is very simple. You, it, you click on to insert onto your um, tick mail trading account. Okay, whether it's a demo or a live, it doesn't really matter. You go into indicators and then you go down to trend. The reason for that is because this is solely used as a trend indicator by myself. Okay, with my method of trading and analyzing the market, I solely use the exponential moving averages not to enter trade or to exit, but solely to identify the trend. Now, we need to click on to moving average. So what you do then is you insert your moving averages three times. Why? Because there are three type of lines, three parameters, three periods. The first one, you start off with 50. So you type 50 right here, okay? Type your 50. You can choose the color that you want as long as you can actually differentiate um, which EMA to which EMA, then you're fine. And make sure the MA method, it's not simple, but it's exponential. The reason for that is because I've identified um, the exponential moving average as more sensitive and it actually fits much better with the geometric trading method style. So then you click on to the apply to, it always will be closed. And you start off with a 50 first, choose your color, then you click on OK. Then you repeat the whole process and insert the other two lines. So you've got 50 as your first line, 50 exponential moving average, and then your 100 and then your 200. So once you've actually done that, you will get that three lines right here. So you've got your 50, you've got your 100, and you've got your 200 as well. Okay, so there you go. So you've got three lines right there. And these three lines are used to identify trend. Now, this is a very, very important tip. When you want to identify trend onto deciding which time frames that you need to actually look at, it has to always go hand in hand with the level of equity that you have. So if you decide on analyzing the market, draw trend lines and do patterns or anything that you do on your chart needs to mirror your equity. If your equity is small, you need to look at smaller time frames. If your equity is of a medium, let's say 1,000 to 5,000, then you can actually afford to go to the one hour, four hour. But if you are looking at daily charts and you want to draw your analysis and base your trades on a daily chart, then you want to look at a bigger level of your equity, perhaps your five to 7,000 mark and above. The reason for that is because of the correction that these charts would actually be uh, making. And the bigger the time frame, you've got bigger corrections, bigger number of pips as well. Uh, so it's very important for you to match your equity level with the time frame that you do your analysis on. Okay, so what I do is a very, very simple tip. When you want to do um, analysis on trend, what you can actually do is pick three time frames that fits you best. For example, if I am trading with a um, medium uh, sort of account with a 5,000 uh, US dollars equity, let's say, I uh, would like to look at my 30 minutes, one hour and 40, let's say, or four hour chart. Uh, if I'm looking at 10,000 mark and above, I could afford to look at my one hour, four hour and my daily chart, okay? So let's say we start off with one hour, four hour and daily as just an, as an example, because even if you've got a smaller equity level, you can still compare all time frames right up to the daily chart, there's no harm. It only boils down to the time that you make your analysis onto the chart that you need to match your equity to the time frames. okay? So let's say 
we start off with a one hour, four hour in daily. What that means is that I would like to identify the trend using the three exponential moving average. Very simple. Okay. How do you do that? Is when you look into uh, when you look into the um, onto your chart right away. Right now, I'm looking at the USD JPY one hour chart. It's on a live market. Prices. <coughs> excuse me for that. Uh, prices are trading <clears throat> at the 10720 level, but just notice that where the candles are trading. Can you actually see that the candles are not above? These candles right away are not above all three lines or under all three lines. They're actually trading in between the three lines. Okay, I'll explain what that means, but I would like to first demonstrate what does it mean to actually be under all three lines. If they are under all three lines, let's say, look at all these candles right here. Now these candles are touching the line, but look at all these candles right here. These ones here are actually trading under all three lines. As they trade under, under all three lines, what that tells you is it's on a downtrend. So this is what you want to look at. You want to look at the current candles position are they actually under all three lines or are they above all three lines? That's your first tip. That is your first factor. Okay. Question is, are the candles trading under all three lines or above all three lines? If they are above all three lines, let me give you another sample. Okay. Like this one here is a very good example. Let me just clear out some of the objects that I've, I've got earlier on give me a second okay so here for example you've got candles as you can see majority of candles are above all these three EMA or exponential moving average lines okay as you see all these candles above you could clearly say that they are on an uptrend the further away they are above the three lines the stronger the uptrend is okay now this is only on one time frame which is the daily chart so how do you actually determine a trend to be strong to stronger? You do not actually need to um, determine the trend just to be strong because whatever that you see strong for now could easily be weaker, all right? What you want to make sure is the trend, is the, the question to ask is, is the trend going from stronger, from strong to stronger? Whether it's going from weak to weaker, how do you know whether it's strong to stronger? Is when you compare three time frames and the three time frames give you the similar picture. Okay. What that means is, for example, if you look onto a one hour chart, and if that one hour chart is showing you that the candles are above as well, all three candles, all three lines, and then you go onto the four hour chart and it does the same picture for you, and then you go onto the daily chart and it again does a better clearer picture showing you that the candles are above all three lines now in this case for the euro usd we have got complications we have got um the lack of clarity of trend why because the three time frames does not actually match now the other factor to consider as well is that you need the three lines to be moving with the trend direction what that means is you need if it's an uptrend First factor, you've got candles above all three lines. That's great. The second factor is to look at these three lines. The three lines need to be pointing up in a bullish trend. In a bullish trend, the three lines need to be pointing upwards towards the sky, towards the sky's uptrend, towards the floor or towards earth is downtrend, as simple as that. Okay. So you need two factors. Number one factor is you need the candles to be above all three lines and all three lines should never touch each other or being uh, entangled to one another. They should actually be uh, far apart from each other and pointing smoothly to the upside or to sky, to the sky, to actually show you an uptrend. Okay? And it's vice versa. For a downtrend, you need all these three lines to point towards the floor, towards the earth, towards earth, and also to look into candles under all three lines. Okay, so I hope that's clear for you guys. That's your very first step. So you've got two factors to consider with the three lines, the EMA lines. Okay, you've got candles needs to be above all three lines if it's an uptrend. And you need all three lines to be pointing upwards. Okay, if it's a downtrend, you need all candles. Most candles that you can see 
to be under all three lines and all three lines need to be pointing towards the floor. Now let's do this analysis of the trend for the USD JPY now. Okay, so now I'm going on to the USD, USD, US dollar versus JPY, JPY is your Japanese yen. Now all we do is we go on to we go on to the, um, uh, what do you call that, to the very end to look at all the movement of candles. Now, when it's above all three lines, great and good, it's the uptrend, bullish, okay? When it's downtrend, it, uh, the candles are under all three lines, which is called bearish. Now, what if candles are not above and not under? This is when you have got a little bit of a sideway type uncertainty. It's not the right timing to actually consider trading or drawing any patterns because the market is uncertain. So you've got only three directions of the market. You've got market, markets able to move to the upside, sideways and downward or bearish, correct? So you've got sideway market, bullish and bearish. Now, bullish usually is governed by your greed, okay, the emotion of greed. Sideway, usually, like we call it a three o'clock type angle. It's usually governed by uncertainty. Now, look at the way the three lines are moving. The three lines are pointing sideways, <clears throat> excuse me, as though it is on a three o'clock angle, okay? Look at the three lines, the three EMA lines. And then what you've also got is you have got the candles in between all three lines. Now, because candles are in between all three lines, that literally means that the market has not made a decision per se whether to move upwards or downwards. That's what it means, okay? So if the market is in doubt, you as the trader need to stay out, as simple as that, okay? So this is not an ideal area that you would actually be looking at at this moment of time to enter the market. Even though you're looking at all these candles going up, most traders, what they do is that, oh, it looks like it's on an uptrend. Yes, true, but um, not for long in a way. Why? Because it might find resistance at any one of these three lines as well. These three lines could easily act as a support and resistance, okay? So here, you've got candles going upwards. Look at how it found resistance and drop down. And it went up again, it found resistance at this 50 EMA and it dropped down again. It did pass through here, but now it's finding resistance at the 200 exponential moving average. What does 250 and 100 mean? All these numbers are actually representing the number of days. So 200 on average movement, 200 days of movement. Okay, so 200 exponential moving average. So that's basically what it means, right? So then the, uh, on the candlestick, on the daily, let's say, you've got 200 candles as well. So excuse me i hope that is uh not too fast i hope the pace is okay but if you guys have got any questions feel free you know just just to ask so this is where we want to start with a trend analysis only when your trend analysis is strong enough that you can actually then move on step by step to actually draw the lines do other analysis let's say pattern analysis geometric patterns and all that so all that could not actually proceed further unless you clear the trend Okay, so that would then lower your risk and heighten your probability. What we want to do is to analyze the market with high probability, low risk trade ideas. Okay, so here, for example, on the one hour chart, let's just start with the one hour chart. We're still doing the trend analysis here. Okay, so here itself, it's quite uncertain at this moment of time. So it's not wise to actually say, oh, it's on an uptrend or an on and downtrend. It's just simply not clear why. Candles are in between all three lines. They're not above all three lines. They're not under all three lines. And what we do next is we go on to the four-hour chart. Now, four-hour chart, yes, candles are under all three lines. Three lines are pointing downwards. That's well and good. But the problem with it now is that you've got candles touching one of the lines, which is the which happen to which happens to be the 50 exponential moving average. We would prefer that the candles are under all three lines and not touching any one of the lines. So uh, let's say that this area here, that's a good uh, consideration of candles being under all three lines, but not for now, as this is finding some correction and touching the line as well. So let's go on to the daily chart. On the daily chart, it's quite a nice, clear downtrend, meaning you've got candles quite far away from all three lines and they are under all three lines. So you can actually say safely that on the daily chart, it's giving you a better picture of a downtrend, but You've got all these lines here. The three lines are not that smooth, though. Why? They are far apart from each other, at only at the end. But you you can see that there's a there's a bit of a crossover 
uh, between the 100 and the 50 moving uh, and, the, and the 200 moving average right here. OK, so we would like to always see a clearer movement of the three lines not touching one another. So, yes, it's uh, a little bit biased to the downside for the USD JPY on the daily chart, which actually means on the long term. OK, so here, for example, I'm going to be teaching you very, very easy ways of understanding support and resistance as well. OK, so here, for example, a, a very important tip. If you've identified the trend to be uptrend or downtrend, OK, let's say let's uh, pick another pair so that uh, you've got clearer indication of trend. Uh, let's just look into. I'm just going to pick one of the pair, um, perhaps. I've got New Zealand dollar right here. OK, let's just, for example, uh, we're looking to the NZD USD at this moment of time. Now, I would like to practice what I've just actually uh, taught you with a trend, of course, um, and also support resistance. This is really, really important for you guys. OK, so let's start with the trend analysis of NZD USD one hour chart, just as an example. As you can see this is where you see candles in between all three lines and this is actually not a good indication okay even though you're looking at the current candles moving up or down um, it's not a clear indication of trend now as you can see the three lines are also moving sideways that actually means that it's on an uncertain mode um, market is still identifying uh, reasons to actually either break out to the upside or break out to the downside OK, now here itself, one hour is not clear on the four hour. However, you've got a little bit of clarity, I would say, finding support, trying to move upwards on the four hour chart. Um, you've got three lines pointing slightly upwards, but not very smooth upwards. It's not as smooth as this one here that you can actually see. OK, it's, it's slightly upwards, but not as strong. OK, and if you go into the daily chart, it's a little bit stronger when you see support or resistance that happens uh, from either one of the three line it's always a good sign because you see the push up here as it found support on one of the three lines right here in this case it was the 50 exponential moving average uh, you could see a big push to the upside now let's say for example you have identified a uh, trend let's say all three time frames have actually matched okay that's that's a good indication if it matched now if it has matched and that gives you a good indication of an uptrend when it's an uptrend you would be a buyer correct you would be a buyer because it's an uptrend and you would actually choose that currency pair to trade to the buy side so you would be most probably clicking the buy button because you are predicting the market of uh, the market to actually appreciate and go up now depends on what position you are your position as a trader could either be a buyer or a seller correct but it does depend on the trend so hence the reason the trend analysis is really really important so if you've got three type frames telling you that it's an uptrend, then you are going to be a buyer. Let's say you are a buyer this time. Using the NZD USD daily chart, let's say you are a buyer, okay? Now, if you were to be a buyer, you would need to do a very, very important thing when you want to draw your support resistance level. But first of all, identify your position. Your position, you are a buyer, and let's say you want to buy the NZD USD, and you're thinking of entering the market. But what you need to do is identify the risk of being taken out by the seller. Because you're a buyer, you need to look to the left to look at previous sellers. Always do that. And it's exactly like crossing a very busy highway. When you cross a busy highway, you're looking to the right and to the left. And it's exactly the same when you're actually trading the forex market, looking at the charts, analyzing the market. You are looking to the right for the price now. The price now for the NZD USD is at 0 0.73 double five. Give me a second, guys. I think we've got some questions. Okay. Hi there, Kaya. You've got a very good question I can see. The question is, when do you determine your entry and exit points because moving averages are lacking behind? That's a very good question. Now, all the most of the indicators, um, they are lagging. Hence the reason I'm not using it for entry and exit. Um, it's not ideal uh, to actually use lagging indicators for exits and entries. Hence the reason I'm only using the moving averages as a uh, trend indicator. Only after you identify and it's really clear and you're really clear with the trend, 
then you can actually use a very nice, um, uh, you know, strong method to actually predict the market. Hence the reason I am going to be demonstrating to you how I actually uh, plan my entries and exit using geometric patterns. So at this stage, we're still at the trend identification uh, side of things. Or only once we are strong with the trend, then we are able to actually predict uh, the market by using a certain strategy. Okay, so that was a very good question, Kaya. Thank you very much for that. Uh, one thing that I would actually, um, you know, um, have you take away tonight is um, to always focus on when you're trading Forex because of the level of risk that are already in the market for you, it's always best for you to focus on the risk and let the profit right behind, uh, you know, for you automatically. Now, you, I know that most traders are focusing on the profits, but the thing is that, uh, you always get um, the opposite direction of the trade to actually take you out. So this is what I want to teach you tonight is to look at how do you draw a proper support. Okay, now this simple technique is going to help you a lot. So here, for example, you have got price now based on NZUSD, okay, daily chart. Let's say you want to buy. Let's say you've got all the reasons to believe that you should be buying, okay? So... We're looking at the price at 0 0.7355, let's say. Now, you are thinking of buying. There's some depreciation of price. When you look to the left, following the current price now, you see that that was a major resistance right there. You've got some more resistance right here as well. How do you draw a nice support resistance line? Never should you draw a single line when you're plotting a support resistance. A support resistance line you usually or best actually works with two lines, okay? So for example, if you're a buyer, you're looking at sellers previously, and you're looking at sellers who have actually pulled down price quite significantly significantly down. Why do I say significant is that if you pull that angle that is actually dropped down to this angle here, that's close to 600 over pips, and that's, that's quite significant. 100 plus pips and above uh, could actually be considered as quite a significant move already. Okay, so this one here is 600 plus uh, pips downwards. Now, very easy. Look at the price now. Trading at 0 0.7355 and is actually exactly at the point that previous sellers has brought down the price. So what you would need to do is go on to the highest body. Okay, the highest body is marked by the price now anyway. So once you've drawn one line on the highest body, okay, which is exactly where price is now, you could then proceed to drawing the highest wick that you can see. Now you've got a zone. That zone is your resistance zone, okay? Very simple. So here itself would actually save you a lot of time and a lot of risk. The reason is this. Because you've drawn that these simple two lines, these simple two lines mark a resistance zone, okay? Now I'm going to color that for you so that it's actually really, really clear, okay? So you've got it right there. Okay, so here itself, you've got a resistance zone. What does that actually mean? That actually means if you are thinking of buying, it's not a good sign. Why? You've got prices in within the zone. You need prices to go above that blue colored zone to then mark more strength to the upside. At this moment, it's not looking that way. You need prices to actually come downwards under this blue zone to then give you an indication of a downward type momentum. At this stage, prices is just trapped in within that zone so it's not actually a good buying type plan okay but before that what i would like to do now is to show you um ways that i am predicting the market using a very simple uh, technique that's called geometric patterns okay so i'll give you an example let's say i'm looking at i've got all the reasons to believe that i would like to um buy and I would like to look for uh, geometric patterns. Now, if the trend is to the upside, you are looking at geometric patterns that are bullish type pattern that looks something like this. I'm just going to draw that very, very simple pattern for you like this. Okay. There you go. So you've got like a lightning type pattern like that. Now, very, very simple. Hope you guys can see it very clearly. You've got a simple pattern like this. You've got your AB here, let's say. A, that's B, and that's C, and that's D, okay? Now, just watch this pattern very carefully. And what we are actually doing 
is we are predicting C to D. Let's say I have got a movement from A right to B, and I've got another movement from B right to C. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to predict if at all the market's going up, how high could it actually go up to, right? So I'm just going to demonstrate right away for you. This is called a bullish geometric ABCD pattern. It starts off with an ABCD pattern first. So we're going to predict the market for NZD, USD using geometric patterns. So let me just answer a question right here. The... Um, Okay, hi there, Jordan. Uh, the indicators uh, that I have are actually the exponential moving average, exponential moving average of 50, 100, and 200. These are the uh, indicators that I use, but it's solely to um, determine the trend. If candles are above all three lines, it gives you an idea of a bullish type trend. If the candles are under all these three lines, then it's giving you an idea of a bearish type trend. Hope that's clear. Okay, there you go. So now we will just start off giving an example of how we predict the market and look at how far um, the NZD USD could go if it decides to go up and break out of this zone and go up furthermore. How far could it actually go? Very simple. What you do is you grab that line right there. There are tutorials coming more as we actually um, continue the uh, webinars. We've got more tutorials on teaching you step by step on drawing the pattern. So don't worry about it. I'm just sharing with you um, on the trade ideas. Uh, on the Thursday's webinar, we'll go into the tutorials of it. Okay. <clears throat> so if I have taken your AB's length, the length of the first leg is called the A to B leg. If I've taken the, the exact length of it, I could then predict and project how far the NZD could go up to. So it, is, it could potentially go up to this level right there. And that is just by predicting using AB equals CD. We call it quadrilaterals, okay? Quadrilaterals means that this length of these ones here, number of candles in here could potentially mirror the number of candles right there too. Okay, so what that actually means is we have got an indication if at all, NZD USD manages to break through that zone, that resistance zone that we've just drawn in blue, then it has the potential, potentially, or probably, with a probability of going up to the 0 0.7670 area. Okay, now this is simply an ABCD pattern and not yet a geometric pattern. To actually convert the ABCD pattern, as you can see on my screen, into a geometric pattern, it's really simple. You simply need to pull from the A point right to the D point that way. Now, once you've actually done that, only then you've got a cross point right here. That cross area right there is called the centroid, which could also mark your ideal entry area. So you could actually easily enter much earlier above the line I've just drawn on the centroid, but because we have actually marked a very strong resistant area, it's probably safer or lower in risk to consider buying only after it has actually gone or consider a buying opportunity only once it has gone above the zone. So that's a very important consideration. This is how you would then look into outlining two lines to actually support your drawing for a support resistance zone, okay? So you've got 0 0.7410 as your last line at the very top. Now, there is another thing that we actually teach in our tutorials, uh, which is actually called psychological numbers. So in the next, uh, for the Thursday's um, session, uh, I would welcome you guys to actually join so we can then talk about psychological levels and how you actually plan your entry and exit using special prizes. They are right prizes to buy and right prizes to actually sell. So we use the help of psychological levels to actually identify that together with the patterns. Okay, so here, for example, we're looking at a potential to buy only if prices have pierced through or broken out from that blue zone and go further up. And I would say that an ideal price based on the psychological number principles would be only at 7430. There are reasons to believe in that. I'll uh, cover that in much more detail in Thursday's tutorial on psychological numbers. Okay, so we're looking into, let's say, an example of 
um, having an ideal price at 0 0.7430. And the thing about it as well is that you have got only one line that we have actually used to predict where the NZD USD could go. We could also be covering, we will also be covering tutorials on Fibonacci. So don't worry if, if you guys are not getting it just yet. Don't worry because it's it's a whole uh, learning process or tutorial just based on the Fibonacci levels as well. So here, for example, if I pull my Fibonacci from point A to point B, I will always pay a lot of attention to where the C point has actually landed. In this case, the C point has landed at 50%. Now, we will start from scratch on teaching you how to use Fibonacci and how to actually use Fibonacci with a geometric pattern. So don't worry about it. So that 50% would then tell me that the D point could reach at about 200%, which is basically that line right up here. So now I've got a zone that has actually marked my potential D point. So I've got another zone that I can actually color it in blue. Now, this is my potential take profit type zone. Okay. So what I usually do is look into a pattern like this to actually mark my buy with the buy entry. But then we lay out very nicely. We've laid out very nicely a support resistance zone just now. So I would then uh, consider as a trader to look into buying only after it has actually crossed and gone above uh, the 7430 7, uh, sort of price, okay, based on principles of psychological numbers that we will cover as well. And I'm looking at, let's say, buying at the 7430 area as an example and looking at actually take profiting only once um, it has actually reached this area here, but then under that zone area. So that would actually give us a potential, for example, um, if I'm looking at, let's say, entry at 7.430, exiting at 7.670, uh, that would give us a very nice 241 pips uh, that's based on a daily chart. Okay, so uh, this is where we would guide you as well in the tutorials that happens every Thursdays on how do you actually plan your trade in smaller time frame to ride along uh, stage by stage in trading that. That 260 pips could easily be broken out um, for the day, for the week. So you can actually break that down with smaller patterns on smaller time frame and we will teach you exactly on how to do that. Okay, so um, let's see, we've got more questions. Okay, um, the color of the uh, EMAs is entirely up to you. I've just used uh, shades of blues. Uh, the the darker ones, the dark the, the darkest one is my two hundred, and then the medium is the is a hundred, and then the lightest blue is fifty. You could use it. You could use it. Uh, you could use any colors you want. Actually, you can even mark it as as long as you know which color um, represents which EMA line. Then you should be fine. Uh, Tattoo. Okay. Um, how do you plot your, uh, it's a very good question, this is actually a very classic most important question, is how do you actually plot your A line? Now, uh, that will be covered in detail in the tutorials that would actually happen as we go on, uh, because we will be covering it, you know, step by step, and I'm just giving you a taste of the, um, the techniques that are actually used in the geometric trading method. So you've got Fibonacci skills that you need to learn. You need to also understand where do you actually plot that um, A line. Now, just to give you a bit of an, uh, a bit of a taste in how you actually plot your um, A line is that you use your Fibonacci. Okay, you use your Fibonacci to do that. Um, I could easily um, use my Fibonacci and you know, put it from the very bottom. But the problem with that is I have got it on a certain um, Fibonacci ratio. So I've got a set of Fibonacci ratio that will offer you a higher probability and lower risk. So we will talk about that on how to use the right Fibonacci ratio in actually um, right Fibonacci ratio for the C point. The C point is very, very important. So this uh, covers an entire course on its own, uh, just the geometric patterns itself. And then you've got coverage on Fibonacci itself. So we've got a range of ratios that I use to actually predict where the D point could actually be. So um, do stay tuned on next webinars as well. So we can then, uh, you know, go into the course. So the courses would actually start on Thursdays. On Tuesdays, as you join me, it'll be uh, going through trade ideas. 
okay so we want to go on to more trade ideas now and I will be drawing more patterns for you to see and you can then uh, start grabbing um, trade ideas on a short medium and long term are we ready we'll actually go on to different pairs now I'll also analyze gold and uh, we can see how it performs so far okay all right let's uh, proceed to um, looking at one of the pair um, have you guys got any suggestions of pairs that you guys are looking at or trading at the moment? Perhaps you guys can shout me some pairs and I'll be most happy to analyze that right in front of you guys and draw patterns, if we've got patterns. Usually what happens is that if you've got um, patterns, then you've got trade ideas, you know? And if the trend is strong enough, then your probability are quite high and your risk are lower. Okay, so any 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 of you guys volunteers to shout out to me uh, pairs that you would like me to draw um, the patterns live for you, so I could share the trade idea with you. Anything at all? Any anyone? Yes, brilliant. We've got we've got someone ready. Brilliant. That's the AUD versus the JPY for the guys uh, for you guys who are new. AUD stands for the Australian dollar versus the JPY is the Japanese yen. So we've got AUD JPY. Let me just look for that pair right away. Okay. AUD JPY, that is. Considerably could be quite a um, quite a volatile type pair as well. Um, and it's also quite good for something that's called the carry trades. You've got quite a number of traders carry trade this. That actually means that you trade it on a buy and traders, because Australian dollar offers quite a high interest rate versus the Japanese yen that's really, really low. So what people do is they buy it as uh, usually only on a, <coughs> excuse me, only on a bullish trend. They would buy it and they would earn interest from it as well. So that's called carry trading. Perhaps you guys want to look it up and uh, read a little bit more about carry trading. So this is quite a popular pair for carry trading, okay, for the AUD JPY. So let's look at this now. For the AUD JPY on a one hour chart, look at it straight away from what I've actually taught you guys and mentioned earlier on. Just doing trend analysis based on the three EMA lines, the 50, the 100, and 200. Look at the position of the candles. Um, Thank you, Tato. I'll also look into Euro, USD, um, and uh, gold as well. Okay, yes, right after the AUD JPY. Thank you so much. For the rest of you guys, if you've got more pairs to throw in, the more that we can analyze as well. Okay, so let's look into AUD JPY on the one hour chart. Got AUD JPY. Now, think about it is very quickly, you can make that decision of a trend. What do you guys think about the trend? Look at the position of candles. Are they actually above all three lines? Are they actually under all three lines? The answer to that is no. They're actually trading on a sideway type market, and you've got the three lines pointing sideways, which actually tells us the trend is a little bit uncertain. Not a little bit, perhaps it's very uncertain, uh, because it hasn't broken up to the upside or downside, so it's not really a good decision to make to enter the market at this moment of time. Okay, um, with that, when we look at price on the right, as we cross to the highway of the forex market, look to the right, look to the left. Okay, uh, on the right, it's trading at 84.71. Now, 0.71 um, is the last two digit that gives me a hint that it's a really, really close to a psychological level, uh, which is 80. Okay, I'll explain that much more in the course as we go on. Okay, um, but here, for example, just looking at a trend, it's not good on the one hour chart. Let's move on to the four hour chart. Now, four hour chart, you've got candles under all three lines. The way the three lines are moving, it's really nice to the downside. But we're not looking at a nice movement of the candles under all three lines. We're looking, <coughs> we're looking at candles uh, touching the line, as we can say. So, as we can see, sorry. <clears throat> and that actually then gives us the hint that it's not quite clear to the downside. It is actually more biased to the downside, AUD, JPY, and the four hour chart, but not really that clear to take position at this moment for a sell. Now, look at the daily chart. On the daily chart, you've got entanglement happening. Okay, here, entanglement. So that actually is not a good sign. Yes, you've got candles under all three lines, but again, trend is not 
my friend at this moment of time because all three time frame didn't actually match strongly to show me a strong downtrend or an uptrend because candles are just not matching the way it should be matching on all three time frames. So here I would then stay out when you're actually in doubt of the trend, that's when you stay out of that pair. Okay, just as of now, so that we can actually look at other uh, sort of opportunities in other pairs. Okay, so that's basically now the way to actually choose the pairs as well for the day will be covered in one of the course structure uh, happening on Thursdays. So I will cover on how do you start your day picking the right pair. Now that's a very, very important part. We'll cover that on Thursday together with the basics of geometric patterns and psychological numbers on this coming Thursday. Okay. <coughs> So, okay, um, we've got something here from Tlali. The AUD JPY was looking at four hour daily and weekly time frame. Okay, now it's a good time frame to look into the chart, into the trend side of things, but you need to also mirror your equity uh, with the time frame that you're analyzing the market with. So now, for example, if I look at the weekly and all that, it's, it's great to look at the weekly um, and and see that, okay, you've got candles and all that. But the thing is, as of what I've actually mentioned today, you need at least three time frame time frames to actually match up so that it gives you a clear picture, okay? All three time frames needs to match and it needs to give you the idea that the candles are trading well under or well above all three lines and the three lines needs to follow the direction of the trend. Okay, at this stage, I don't see that in the one hour. I don't actually see that on the four hour either. And I don't actually see that definitely on the daily chart. I don't see a match on all three lines. Uh, sorry, on all three time frames. Okay, so that's not a good uh, selection of pair to actually look into trading because the other thing as well is, I mean, you could easily zoom in. Yeah, you could easily zoom in and look at that candle. And when you look at that candle, you, you may say, or most traders will say, okay, it's on an uptrend now. But an uptrend or a downtrend needs to be seen from a bigger perspective. It needs to be zoom out, okay? And you need to see the perspective of it like this, okay? Yes, it has gone up, came down here, went up there, came down again, but now it's actually coming downwards and it's actually <coughs> under all three time frames and giving you that indication that, yes, candle for now may be actually appreciating. So let's say you want to be a buyer. Okay, now you want to be a buyer, and if you look left, you've got some support angle here. But if you are, were to be a buyer, you need to ask your first a risk question. Who are the sellers previously? Where has market dropped previously? Because if you were thinking of buying, the, but the sellers would be the one who would be taking you out of the market. Okay, because if it were to reverse now, that's actually been caused by the strength of the sellers. So what you want to do is you want to scroll, and you want to look at whether or not previously you've got market dropping. You've got market has actually dropped here previously. That was some time ago. That was back in back in uh, 2016 in April, let's say. Okay, market has dropped. But I would like to look at a peak of where it has actually dropped in, in you know, previously. So here, for example, this is quite a significant drop. Now, when was this? This was some, some time ago. Here was exactly where price is now, correct? And this is exactly where price has actually dropped. And how much did it actually drop? All the way down to 1,035 pips, okay? Of course, it took some time to actually drop that much, but this was a significant, very, very significant drop, okay? So what you would need to do is then to look at some support here, yes, but then I want to actually mark uh, where prices has actually fallen. You can easily look at this group of candles here, the lowest, let's say uh, highest body, and then you've got the highest wick, which is right there as well, okay? So this is how you draw that resistance. Now you can actually see that while you mark that area there where price have actually fallen, okay, you have got price now trapped in between the two lines. Okay, so here is when I would say, no way I'm going to be buying at this stage because my price is not right. It's actually trapped between the two lines. As you can see, you've got support in this area as I zoom out. Look at this line, has got all the support resistance happened previously. You've got support right there, some more support. 
you've got all these concentrated prices here <coughs> and you've got that price fall as we have talked about as we go back you've got all concentrated price at that zone so that actually marks a very very strong zone but this is based on a daily chart so what i'm looking at now is that if I'm saying that, okay, I wish to actually participate in a buy. I wouldn't participate in a buy right now. Only once prices have actually broken out, okay, broken out of that zone. Now, this is your zone, basically, for the AUD JPY, okay? Now, to summarize, it's too risky. Um, I wouldn't look at patterns at this moment of time uh, because I need the trend to be strong and I need um, I need a breakout of price at this moment and giving me price action at this moment of time it's still on thinking mode is in within this zone for AUD JPY if you want to look at a buy uh, type position then you need to wait till candles pierce through to the upside okay now you can always go on to lower time frames let's say and on the lower time frames you want to look at whether they are candles are above all three lines you know, you want to do the same with the uh, lower time frames like five minutes, 30 minutes and one hour, let's say. Group up three time frames and ask yourself, uh, you know, look um, and, and see whether or not the three time frames are actually matching in terms of trend. Okay, very, very important. So that's your AUD JPY. I must say that it's not giving me a very clear indication uh, in terms of pattern, um, mainly because of the trend. Okay, it's still trading in between that line. I still need um, candles to be above all three lines. Hopefully, that is quite clear for you guys, yeah? So the AUD JPY. So, <coughs> excuse me, just a drink of water, if you guys don't mind. Okay, so we've covered that AUD JPY, just not giving me a very clear indication at the moment of time uh, in terms of trend. So I will not look further into drawing a trend line. I rather look into the other pairs that you guys have actually requested, like the Euro USD and gold. Okay, so let's go to the Euro USD at this moment of time. Okay, you've got your Euro USD at this moment. Let's do a bit of a trend analysis quickly. Okay, now we start off with the one hour chart first. One hour chart gives me an indication of candles under the three lines, but the way the three lines are actually moving are not very encouraging. They're not actually giving me a clear indication of trend. Three lines, as you can see, it's crossing over and it's pointing sideways. So that's giving me a bit of a trend uncertainty. But then, of course, you've got candles, you know, coming to the downside at this moment of time, okay? It's uh, it's not giving me a clear indication of trend at this moment of time. Um, we've got a question here, Jordan. What is the indicator on the main chart? Uh, indicator on the main chart, as I have actually uh, mentioned, is the 50, 100, and 200 exponential moving average, yeah? These are the indicators. These three lines that you see, are your 50, 100, and 200 exponential moving average that you can actually insert the indicators like that, pick your trend, go into moving average, and you type in the numbers on the period. Start off with 50, make sure the MA method's exponential and apply to price. Okay, so you, you would be doing this three times basically, inserting three lines. Okay, so you start off with 50 and then 100 and then, um, 50, 100, and then 200. Okay, is that clear? Uh, Jordan, is that okay for you? These are the indicators. You need to insert them yourself. All right, okay. So let's uh, go back to, um, let's go back to the um, Euro USD. <coughs> so if Euro USD is not clear on the trend on the one hour chart, on the four hour chart, we have got the same thing happening. It's uncertainty of trend. Why? Because you've got candles in between all three lines. As you go into the daily chart, you have got a little bit of a clear, I would say, movement to the upside. You've got some, um, what do you call that, um, opportunity for a bullish run, but that's on the daily chart. So, yes, there's some, some indication of some bullishness. Okay, now as, as prices come down on the daily chart, as it comes down, if you look left, you have got some support area right here. Okay, so here may actually be an area on the lowest uh, body right there and the lowest, based on this area, lowest wick and lowest body, that gives you a bit of a support type um, potential. 
okay and as we go to the left you could see that that mirrors very nicely on some support previously here as well okay as we go to the left some more you could see there are more support and where prices have automatically coincidentally came up to that level and pushed pushed up so this one here i would say that there may be some little room for prices to fall first and come to this area of 1.2235 area before it actually goes up further but this is on a daily chart so that actually means that there may be more fall to be expected for the euro usd before you see a rise in price because the daily chart um is giving you hints of the long term okay so yes it may be falling much more falling first before actually rising and it may fall and find support at the area of 1.235 to 1.21 uh, or 2200 okay that's basically our psychological levels as well so this is for the euro usd let's go on to the 50 minutes chart let's see whether we could actually see some indication of a clearer trend here itself on the um on the five on the 15 minutes chart it looks like you've got candles under but then you know it's touching the lines again it should touch and come under much more then it gives you a clearer uh, indication to the downside but the bias is definitely to the downside because you've got all the resistance resistance touching all three lines right there okay and as we go on to the 30 minutes chart let's look at the candles again candles are under yeah this is actually not a bad one but um, we look at some uh, crossing of lines here. It needs to be moving clearly to the downside like the candles, but it's not really a 30-minute chart. Um, and it's not very clear, again, with the Euro USD on the one-hour chart because you've got, again, some crossing of lines. So I know there may be um, most of you or some of you who are familiar with entering the market when there's a cross and things like that. I personally don't use uh, that strategy of using lagging indicators like the moving average to actually enter the market or exit, as I've mentioned earlier on. So I solely use my exponential moving averages to only determine the trend or the strength of the trend. And only after that, that I actually proceed to looking for patterns and drawing out patterns. Okay, in that way, I find that uh, you would be spotting more high probability, lower risk type trades. Okay, guys, so we have got uh, Euro USD right there covered. Um, it's just that it's not giving a very clear indication at this moment of time. Um, as you see prices here, price now at 1.2346, it's really close to the 2350 psychological number as well. So what I will do is I'll mark um, the two psychological levels and I will you know, uh, go into it in the tutorials um, this coming Thursday, okay, in more detail. So I'm just going to mark it. I'm going to show you um, the working of psychological levels or psychological numbers. So I've got the price uh, at the moment where price now is really close to 2350, which is one of the psychological level. And to the downside is really close to the 2320, which is the other psychological numbers. So you've got four sets of it. We'll cover that on Thursday. Uh, 2320 and 2350. So here, as you can see, the two lines itself uh, marks the two psychological levels. But then we've got current price now. It's actually sandwiched in between the two psychological numbers. So you need the price for now or current prices to break out from this level first to go upside and only above the 2350, like 2360 or so that then you can actually consider looking into more strength um, by the buyers. If not, if it hits downwards, it goes under 2320. That means it prefers or the market prefers to be to the downside or the control would be by the sellers if it goes under this. So this itself with the psychological level itself, you could easily do another sort of zone right there. As you can see, you've got support right there, right on the psychological number. You've got more support close to it as well. As you go on, you have got support there, support there as well. So here, it easily marks that zone as a very risky zone at this moment of time to trade. You would only be considering trading once prices for Euro USD has gone above or under that blue color zone. Okay, at this stage, it's still very, very risky. Okay, guys, so that's basically it. I would like to also demonstrate a bit of a pattern right here that I can actually see at a glance. You've got A to B right here, for example, and you've got C to D right there. So, for example, I would use the ABCD pattern initially to actually predict the um, market to the upside. 
Okay, so I would probably uh, look into this previously just as a demonstration of the ABCD pattern to look into take profiting at this area right there. Okay, because that's my A, this is my B, B to C, and I'm looking at buying at this area. So I would have actually bought from the area of the center. Okay, don't worry, guys, I will cover this on the tutorial site. So that's your centroid area that actually would mark. Um, the entry area but above that entry point we'll look into psychological numbers as well later on on how you tweak the right pricing okay and you're looking to buying let's say above that middle line here and would be taking profit just before it reaches that area right there so that uh, potentially could be a um, 120 100 to 120 type uh, trade uh, potential right there if you had actually bought and drawn that pattern uh, found that the trend was strong to the upside you could easily take that number of pips right there based on the one hour chart itself okay so that's just a bit of a demonstration right there because at a glance I could see that pattern uh, and that is one of of, of it that uh, um, that traders have actually participated in okay so there we go we've got that in the euro usd so let's cover a the last um the last analysis and that would be for gold okay let's go into gold this moment of time all right we have got um a couple of um a couple of uh, previously drawn type patterns right there as well we have um looked into some abcd uh, geometric abcd pattern bullish pattern that actually gives us an indication of a potential rise to the 1389 area it actually reached um we've marked the an ideal entry area at the center point area right here at 1308 and above and we're looking at that as the target area of 1389 um it has actually reached the 1368 but now it's looking like uh, it still prefers to find support at any one of these lines but before anything else let's just do a little bit of um, a trend analysis and always start with the trend analysis so that you would be able to be at the right side of the market and uh, draw the correct pattern so here for example on the um, daily chart itself we have got a bit of a potential to the upside it looks like it found support right here it's coming back down as well but let's just start with the one hour chart looking into how the candles are <coughs> reacting <coughs> excuse me are reacting based on the um exponential moving average now here itself on the one hour chart yes you've got candles um to the downside you've got you've got domination by bearish candles they are under all three lines uh, but these three lines are not giving us a very clear indication of trend because you see you've got a bit of a touch point right there you've got candles um you know you've got the lines uh, just trying to cross one another there uh, it's not pointing downwards very clearly and you've got it on the sideways side so at this point in a one hour chart the trend is just not clear the trend direction is not actually clear as yet okay and uh, the other thing as well is we'll compare with the four hour chart on the four hour chart it's got loads of complication a bit of you know uncertainty of the trend because you've got all these candles right here has actually dropped quite a bit but it's not coming out of the three lines okay it's not under all three lines and you've got the three lines pointing sideways for gold at the moment so you've got all this uncertainty uh, i would say non clarity of trend as well so as we go on to the daily chart um, you could see that candles are above yes but you've got some <coughs> excuse me you've got some depreciation of price at this moment so usually what happens is that you've got um you've got candles coming downwards and if they're really close to either one of the line in this case it might be able to find support at either one of these lines and then back up again now here for example just to give you a little bit of indication when i look at a rise in price like that and then i see a correction here this correction that bounces off this line could easily make up a pattern for me and we'll cover on how you actually identify patterns in on Thursdays okay so we will cover different topics uh, that make up the basic of the geometric uh, patterns or geometric trading method okay so here for example if I lay out that line on an A to B I'll be able to predict and give an idea of how uh, far 
could it actually rise up to once it is actually done all this correction and then find support if it does actually decide to go upwards how far could it actually go so we can draw an a to b line like that and once we draw a b to c line you've got a to b b to c and how do you predict that very simply how far could it go if it decides to go up you just double click that you move that a to b and you move it right there. So then we've got a quadrilateral. That actually means AB equals CD right there, okay? <clears throat> so there you go, you've got a simple ABCD predicting or giving you a potential of price rise to that area of 1436. That is really a very, you know, high up there. But then again, we're looking at the daily chart, okay? So um, from this ABCD type pattern, how do we convert it into a geometric pattern? Very easy. We grab the A right to the D, and we've got the center point right there, and that center point would actually mark an ideal entry area, but actually it means above that centroid area would actually be a better uh, or ideal entry price for a buy. So at this stage, you've got candles under that line, so it's not really a very ideal area to consider buying. Now, let's say if prices were to actually go above or past the 1336 area for go, 1336, let's say, let's say cross upwards. What you would need to do is because you're going to be, you are going to be participating in the market as a buyer, you need to look left and look at challenges, whether you've got challenges as sellers might take you out. So what you do is you go onto this area here and you draw a resistance zone. Um, with that, you draw two lines, one on the highest body that you can see in this peak, okay, and then the highest wick, and you've got a zone. Now, what that actually means is I would then prefer to also mark this area right here because you've got that area there. So um, for me, as a conservative type trader, looking at the risk element, I would then mark this whole area right here as a resistance zone. So you've got a resistance zone right there now. So now prices for gold has actually been respecting that resistance zone and hence the reason it's actually coming you know, downwards at this moment of time. So you've got a bit of a bearishness happening with gold at this moment of time. So it's not really ideal for a buy. So your buy position should only be above this blue zone, which is above the 1365 area and above. So only once prices have actually reversed and gone up and gone through that zone, that you've got a better consideration to actually buy gold at the right price, which is above the 1365 area to mark your take profit area under the 1436 area. So I hope that's clear, guys. So this is for your goal position. I know loads of uh, you know traders will be looking at lower time frames, and then they're looking at all oh, chances of prices of gold going up uh, at lower time frames. Maybe showing you a different picture, but here on the daily chart itself, um, I've laid out that um, zone, and it's giving you an indication of what's happening to gold at this moment of time because of the appreciation of the dollar. Now, if you look into the USD index, USD index is a great tool to understand the position of the dollar. USD index is an index that's not tradable, but it gives you an idea of the USD or the US dollar strength compared to a basket of six currencies. So the USD index itself, maybe you want to type that on Google, or look into investing.com or various other sites on what the USD index is. And it's a good indicator to tell you about the strength of the dollar. So at this stage, we have got, I mean, as of market open today, uh, there were lots of news of the positivity on the US dollar index. So that is giving a rise or a hint of a rise of um, the US dollar or, or an appreciation of the US dollar. So that's probably the reason why uh, it's moving in parity or in opposite direction with uh, gold. So you've got a rise appreciation of dollar, then you're looking into uh, a falling of price of gold at this moment of time. But again, as it comes downwards, there may actually be potential of it finding support at either one of this exponential moving average as well. There you go, guys. We've covered a bit. Um, and I think we've covered the AUD, JPY, Euro, USD, and gold as well. And a couple of uh, little hints of drawing the patterns, a um, couple of hints on uh, how do you actually draw support resistance. But 
um, you know, this is just bits and pieces to actually give you a bit of a taster on uh, what we can actually cover in detail on Thursdays uh, by topics as well. So hope you guys actually uh, enjoyed this session. And uh, just before I leave, I would like to ask whether you guys have got any questions for me before we end the webinar for tonight. Any questions, guys? Hope you guys enjoyed that. Questions on your current trade? Any other pairs, perhaps? Any questions at all, guys? All right. Looks like it's uh, been covered, I think. Now, if you guys have got any questions, you know, um, easily contact your account manager at TechMail as well, okay? And uh, feel free to ask these questions and uh, the questions will be passed to me and I'll be happy to answer them via email as well. Okay, guys, any other questions? Let me just see. Thank you very much for that, Tato. I appreciate your time as well to attend the webinar. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, we'll see you on Thursdays. Um, for you guys, on Thursdays will be tutorial time, so I'll be teaching you the, the right skills to apply onto the market. Uh, can we look into GBP cap? Yes, we can. We'll have that as the very last um, pair that we're looking at, but I like to look at GBP cap myself. Okay, so let's do that right away. Uh, top so GBP. GBP cat. Let's give me a second. All right, we've got a GBP cat right there. And let's move all other things out of the way. Let's start. As usual, we start with a one hour chart on a trend analysis. Now, here, Tato, it's looking like um, it's really, really strong at this moment of time to the upside, as you can see, right? You guys have got the right skills now to actually identify trend. Uh, why I say it's really strong, you've got candles moving upwards quite far from the three lines and they're above all three lines, which is a great indicator that it's actually moving to the upside. And then you've got the three lines, the three EMA exponential moving average lines are pointing upwards as well. They're not too steep upwards, but they're reasonably okay. So they're actually not touching one another. They're not entangled. They're actually quite far from each other, which is good. So re let's move on to the four hour chart right away. Now, what does the four hour chart do? If you zoom out a little bit, it gives you a better picture, clearer picture. You've got loads of support, support touching the, the, the lines, the three lines, and then pushed upwards, okay? Which is a very good sign. So you've got two matches now. You've got two matches of an uptrend between one hour and four hour. You've got candles above. Uh, you can actually see the dominance of candles as well. You've got all these longer, bigger move to the upside by bullish candles. So again, you've got two strikes, okay? Two strikes and two time frame telling you that it's an uptrend for the GBP CAD. All right, very nice. Now we move on to the daily chart, right? Okay. As we go into the daily chart, that's again a very nice strong uptrend, three lines pointing upwards, far away from each other, and then you've got candles all above all three lines. Now would be the time for us to draw a little bit of a pattern. Okay. Now what pattern would be would we be drawing is a bullish pattern. Now, in a bullish market, when we actually have got a match three strikes on three time frames showing a strong uh, bullish trend, then we want to be drawing a bullish type pattern. Now, here we go. Let me just draw that right very quickly. On a live market, we draw a pattern starting from here, but I'll cover that in the tutorial. Don't worry, guys. Okay, I've got my A to B right there, and then I've got my B to C right there. Okay, now A, B, B, C. And then I'm actually wanting to predict and look at, uh, I'll draw my Fibonacci first just to make sure that it sits there. Okay, very nice. Um, I see a potential of it rising quite high. Uh, still, you've got space to actually look into more, um, what do you call that, upward move. We're just looking at the one hour chart at this moment of time. So we've got an ABCD like that okay so what that means is that I'm looking at a potential of price for the GBP CAD reaching the 1.7773 area okay now what I will do next is I shall then convert this ABCD into a geometric pattern just to mark the ideal entry point for the buy would actually be only above 
that center point. It has already gone far beyond the center point. Now, the thing is that because it's gone beyond the center point already, I want to look to the right and look at the price now. The price now is at 1.7681. Now, 81, I'll, I'll always ignore the last fifth digit. I always take the price at four decimal places. So I'll look at 1.7681. Now, 81 is your last two digit, and that 81 is too close to the 80 psychological number. If I wish to buy, I wouldn't be buying at 7681. Based on the principles of psychological numbers, it's only good to actually buy 10 pips above the psychological level. If the psychological level is 80, 80 plus 10 is 90. So I'll just give you an example. An example of how a trader would actually trade looking at the price based on psychological numbers is not to trade at 1.7682 which is the price now but to trade at 1.7690 instead as a buying price okay so it's 7690 or or it could also be um, above the 7700 psychological number so that would give you another price another option of 1.7710 Okay, so you've got two psychological numbers. Uh, two right price based on tweaking to the psychological number. So you've got a better buying price right there, okay, at 1.7690 or 1.7710. Okay, and here, for example, 1.7773, it's a price that um, basically... Um, could be adjusted a little bit better for your take profit. For the take profit, it should be adjusted based on psychological number uh, at 1.7770. The reason for that is because the price that has been marked here <coughs> the price that it has been marked here is simply too close to the 80 psychological number. So 80 is where um, it could easily be marking a reversal as well, okay? So uh, hence the reason I want to actually uh, take profit 10 pips under the 80. So 80, uh, sorry, 7773. So, you know, uh, 80 is a psychological number. So 80 minus 10 is 70. So hence the reason I have given that price as a sort of better uh, take profit sort of point based on the principles of psychological number. This is what traders would actually be doing is looking at tweaking the numbers. So it's entirely up to you and it's entirely up to your risk level as well. Okay, so this is only for educational purposes, of course. So we are looking at angles that we can actually tweak these numbers to a better uh, type, uh, what you call it, to a better type um, price. Okay, so hope that is actually um, helpful uh, on the GBP CAD. I think I've got some more questions. That is close to about 80, uh, 70 to 80 pips uh, type of move if you're considering that tweaked uh, price right there between 7690 or 7710. Okay, guys, <coughs> excuse me. Hi there, Kaya. You've got a bit of a question about moving averages right here. I appreciate your question as well. Um, we could actually use the moving average as support. Yes, exactly. The, the moving average are also where support and resistance happens to. Yes. And you know what's the nicest thing about it as well is that when it finds support or resistance on these moving averages, it could also be coincidentally most of the time uh, very close to the psychological numbers as well. So we want to mix all these nice ingredients up so that it can actually cook you a nice dish of pips. Okay, so this is what we want to do. So um, we'll meet again on Thursday and uh, we will go into tutorials and go into the right uh, set of skills that would actually then be married up and uh, combined together to create that trade plan for you practically. Okay, how does that sound to you guys? All good? Okay, guys, I think that's all I have for you guys tonight. Uh, I would like to um, say a very big thank you for participating and, uh, um, you know, being great attendees and asking lots of questions, which I really like. The more you ask, the more I learn as well as much as you do. Okay, guys? So, okay, um, a very good night to you guys uh, there, and uh, we'll meet again on Thursday, and uh, see you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
this tree is where I